So you've done absolutely everything, but you just can't lose weight. Look, it's time to pull up a chair. You and me need to talk. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athlinex.com. So if you're struggling to lose weight, we have to do something about it. And that's why I wanna sit down and have this conversation with you today because there's two categories that you might find yourself in right now. Number one, maybe you really want something to happen but you're not willing to put in the effort to get there. And if that's the case, I understand what the struggle is but you know that until you start to do something about it, nothing is gonna change. But oftentimes, I find people are in the other category. They're actually doing something. They're trying but it's still not working. And in that case, there's five things that I listen for. Five key phrases that I listen for. And what I do is I call them my red flags because if I hear them, they're instantly alerting me as to what your problem actually is and why you're not where you wanna be. And I have to throw the red flag if I hear them. If I can raise your awareness here, I can make the change you're looking to make. So with that said guys, let's start breaking them down one by one. Are you saying any of these things? Because if you are, I'm throwing the flag. What's the best exercise to do to get rid of this. All right, so we have to start right here because this question I've heard probably a million times. And don't worry, if you've asked it yourself, it's okay, because today we change these things. You see, if you've ever pointed here and said, what can I do for this? Or you've pointed over here and said, is there a good exercise, Jeff, that can help me with this? Or maybe you've pointed over here and said, what's the best exercise for this area? The line of thinking is flawed and that is what's holding you back because we know not only is an exercise not going to be capable of targeting any specific area on your body, but more importantly, it's not about exercise at all and it never will be. It's about nutrition. If you don't create a hypocaloric state, you're not going to lose the weight that you're seeking to lose. Even if you took an exercise like a burpee that's pretty metabolically demanding, it only burns 13 calories per minute and that's requiring you to do it minute after minute after minute. The changes you need to make have to happen in what you're putting in your mouth every single time. I don't understand. I do faster cardio every morning. What the hell? All right, so this one might come as a surprise to you because you're thinking, Jeff, I know better. There's no crunch that's going to get rid of my midsection, but I do know that cardio is important, and I know that faster cardio is even better. Not really. You see, not only is cardio not the main driver of your results, nutrition is, but fasted cardio is actually no better than cardio itself. As a matter of fact, research shows that though you might burn a higher percentage of fat within the session, you actually burn a lower percentage of fat after the session versus a fed cardio session. And when it nets all out, you're actually burning about the same. No matter when you do your cardio, guys, it is going to allow you to create some additional energy deficit to help you with creating that hypocaloric state but even then the contributions are minimal. Instead, you should think of cardio as a way to strengthen your heart and focus your efforts on creating the deficit through what you put in your mouth. It's always gonna come down to nutrition because even an intense calorie burning cardio session might get you a 600, 700 calorie deficit that can all be undone by choosing the wrong foods at the next meal. It's certainly not my diet. I'm a clean eater. Okay, what the fuck? All right, so there's one that makes my ears perk up more than any other. It's this one right here. As soon as someone defines their way of eating as clean eating, I know right off the bat, there's something wrong. You see, they might be trying though, and that is they'll say, Jeff, I eat chicken, fish, oatmeal, and salad. And I say, wow, that's a great start. Until I realize that when I think chicken, they think chicken parmesan. And when I think fish, they're thinking sushi. And when I think oatmeal, they think Quaker maple brown sugar oatmeal. And when I think salad, they think salad. You see, semantics matter here. The difference in words matters because it's the difference in a lot of calories. If you were to compare these foods calorically, you'll see that they are not at all the same other than sharing a single ingredient. If you want to get this right, guys, educate yourself as to the differences between these foods and realize that the differences matter, especially if you're looking to create long-term permanent weight loss. I'm totally locked in. I'm following the Atkins diet. I mean, I'm doing the South Beach diet. I'm actually paleo all the way. Look, whether it's South Beach, Atkins, Keto or Paleo, the fact that you have a name for how you eat is an indicator to me that you've got a short-term solution to your long-term problems. You need to figure out how to make this a permanent lifestyle if you're looking for that long-term permanent weight loss. I mean, ask yourself, how many times in the last five or 10 years have you had a different name for how you eat? If you ask me that same question, I can go back 30 years and the answer will still be the same, zero. 
because what I do is more of a lifestyle. It doesn't carry a name with it. We all know that names are oftentimes associated with diet plans. And diet plans, by nature, are short-term fixes. Because you even call it that yourself. I'm on this diet or I'm off this diet. Never I'm on this for the rest of my life. And oftentimes we know that what you do to get to where you want to be in terms of your weight loss goals is what you need to stay with to stay at your weight loss goals. Look, the key here is save the names for kids and puppies and not for how you eat. And I promise you, you'll find the long-term permanent weight loss you're after. I just want to get my beach body ready for the summer this year. Not this time. Now look, I would never begrudge somebody from setting a goal. That's a good thing, especially for establishing motivation to get you going. But when your goal date has an expiration to it, you're setting yourself up for failure. Look, maybe you talk about a summer cut, but summer is eventually going to turn to fall. It's going to be over. Then what happens? Or maybe you want to get ready for that family vacation. You want to look good on the beach, but the vacation is going to end at some point. Or maybe you just want to look good at that reunion again. But when the reunion's over that night, then what happens? Oftentimes we find ourselves going back to exactly what we did to put ourselves in the situation where we're looking to get in shape again for the next event. You have to look deeper than that, guys. You've got to look for that internal motivation if you're looking for that real long-term success. I know personally for me, I got a lot of people who depend upon me for motivation and information. That's a good deep driver for me. But more importantly, all I have to do is look to my two sons. I realize that they look at me as a role model and I want to make sure that I don't disappoint them in the long run. I have a deep inner drive and a motivation to keep me where I want to be. You need to do the same thing. Find what lies beneath the surface, literally, and I promise you that's where you're going to find your permanent weight loss success. And there you have it, guys, my five red flags that I listen for that allow me to get to the bottom of your weight loss issues so that you can finally get there. And remember, if you've asked any of these questions yourself, don't be embarrassed. Instead, be inspired because with the awareness will come the long-term success. If you're looking for programs, guys, we have them all laid out over at athletics.com, complete daily meal plans. If you're looking for my daily meal plan of what I do every single day, I'll link that at the end of this video. If you haven't done so, guys, make sure you leave a comment below so I can hear what you want to hear in future videos. And also, make sure you click subscribe, turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, I'll see you. Got you, bitch! You're dead.